Steve was one of those people that uh, he always put himself second. He was a man of the community. He was a family man. Whenever you lose an officer, it, uh, it, it hit its home. And when it's your neighbor in the department and you were there uh, during the incident, it has that much more of an effect on you. He was just that type of guy that wanted to help and he always did. I think it's very fitting to be sharing this award with Stephen. I was the last person to see him and obviously, you know, I, I think about it every single day. When you get a radio call, um, such as this one, it's a verbal domestic between father and son. That could be just a simple argument between a father and son and that's what you would hope for. Any of us could have been in the position that I was put in on May 12th. I mean, it could have been anybody's, you know, because I had just signed on duty. In a small town community, it's in these rural communities, usually the, there's only one officer on duty, so typically we back each other up and we do have a camaraderie and we, you know, we're always there for each other. Steve uh, preferred to work um, at a time when he can interact with the community, uh, the, the Brentwood townspeople the most. Uh, he always gave us one shift a week. At the time, it happened to be Monday evenings. He didn't change when he put the uniform on. He always reached out on a personal level to do things that he did. And I think that the law enforcement side of it just allowed him to reach out and help more people because that's the essence of the man who he is. As I'm en route to Brentwood, I uh, called dispatch on the radio, asked them to read me the narrative of the, of the call. They told him that they couldn't rave, raise Officer Arkell on the, on the radio. Um, now when Derek gets, arrives on scene, he doesn't hear the gunfire but he knows Steve's in there and he knows he's got to go in after him. I arrived on scene and I saw an older gentleman standing out front of 46 Mill Pond Road. And the call was alleged to be between a father and son, so obviously this was the father. He found the older gentleman kind of st standing around or walking out the front of the house. Um, he couldn't uh, get uh, Officer Arkell on the radio. The dispatch was trying to get Officer Arkell on the radio. Um, so Derek uh, tried to talk to the uh, older gentleman. He handcuffed him, put him down on the ground just for safety reasons. Basically, when I did, made the decision to enter the house, I knew there was a chance I probably was going to make it out of there alive. I knew I wasn't going to leave Officer Arkell in there by himself. I did not know the situation. I wanted to take control of the situation instead of being victimized by the shooter. So as I went in the house, I went in the house quickly, unannounced, with my weapon drawn, trying to clear the first floor, trying to make contact with either Officer Arkell or the shooter. And when he entered the house, he could see bullet holes everywhere. Um, and then shortly thereafter, he, the gunman started shooting at him. I heard gun, gunfire coming overhead, come from overhead, and I, and I knew it was meant for me because I didn't hear any gunfire up until the point until I entered the, entered the house. I concealed myself underneath the landing from which the shooter was, you know, taking position from. And I stopped and I waited until he ran out of ammo. So I ran towards the back of the house trying to just change my position once he ran out of ammo to reload, and that's where I saw Officer Raquel was mortally wounded. I still have not seen the shooter. The reason for leaving the house is obviously I was under fire, and I couldn't help Officer Raquel, and he was on the second floor. He's shooting at me you know, from an elevated position, which is a huge tactical disadvantage for myself, and it was later to be determined that there was a cutout on the second floor where he could have just pivoted and had a straight shot down to the floor to the back of the house as well. So he had a bird's eye view of the front of the house and the back of the house. And I knew just getting out of that house was the only thing I could do at that point. So I jumped off the deck, took cover underneath the deck against the house, called it in a dispatch that we have an officer down, shots fired. At some point I heard uh, Derek on the radio um, yelling, shots fired, officer down. Of course, that's the worst thing you ever want to hear in your career as a police officer. Uh, I jumped in my cruiser and head out to the scene. When I was responding to the scene, a lot of things were going through my mind. People wanted to go in to get Steve, but in the meantime, this guy's still shooting at us with an AK-47 in rapid fire. And uh, you know, something you never, I'll never forget. It's a miracle more people weren't shot or killed, to be honest with you. And I think that was the key, that Derek was able to make a quick assessment. It turned out he was 100% right with his assessment. Um, he went in to go after Steve, and he came under gunfire himself um, and was able to escape. I, I believe had I not gone through the house and, and made the observations that I did and that Officer Arkell was deceased and knowing 
you know, after the fact, you know, the, the firepower he had, the tactical advantage he had, the rear cutout in the, in, the, in the back of the home that he had, that there was, you know, an intent to cause a lot more bodily harm and a lot more officers probably would have been killed. He's a hero, basically. He saved a lot of our other officers' lives by doing what he did, relaying the information so that we had the information. Otherwise, officers would have went running in there and uh, it would have been, you know, there would have been more life lost. By sharing this award with Steve, it's just, it's, it's, it's closure for me. I mean, we're, we're gonna be, obviously, there's gonna be a link to us, him and I forever, because, you know, I used to work in Brentwood, and he, he and I were the first two on scene there. Unfortunately, you know, he didn't make it out, I did. Um, but, the, like, the th only thing I have is just, you know, there's no regrets, you know, I, I, I did what I had to do, and, um, you know, you know, thankfully more officers didn't get hurt. Without a doubt, uh, both men are heroes. Uh, Steve answered the call for duty that day. For him, I think it was probably a routine call like anything else. Knowing the nature and knowing the man that he is, uh, I think that Steve arrived on scene and wanted to walk into that residence, settle a dispute between a father and a son, have everyone smiling and laughing when he left and go about his day. As far as Derek is concerned, the same thing could happen tomorrow and Derek Frenick would do the very same thing. With no regard for his safety, he would go in and he would help anyone. And that's why Derek's a hero and that's why Steve Arkell's a hero.